All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today is the big release for Xbox's next big first party game, which is Forza Motorsport. If you have the premium add on bundle or the premium edition of the game, the official release date for everybody else on Game Pass and whether you want to purchase it on PC or Xbox is going to be October 10th. But yesterday we got the review scores starting to drop for Forza Motorsport. And right now it is sitting at an 85 on Metacritic, which is a great score. The game is looking like it is going to be another great first party release from Xbox to top off 2023. You can go through and read a lot of the reviews and a lot of people are saying how good it looks, how good it feels, all this type of stuff. I mean, it's not perfect. What game releases in 2023 and in, in the current generation of of consoles is perfect very very hard to find in fact we're seeing a lot more games releasing broken than in a good state but fort the motorsport seems to be one of those games that is doing very well and if you're a sim racing fan you are going to enjoy it now i'm not really here to talk about the game itself too much because i haven't played it yet i am going to be jumping into it today and just trying it out i'm not the biggest expert in sim racers as i've said on my channel multiple times i'm more into the arcade side and the kart racing side of things but very interested in forza motorsport in terms of how it's going to look and how it is going to feel what we are seeing though with this great score meta score of 85 is a lot of comparisons to gran turismo 7 the console war is absolutely kicking off as usual whenever a first party game does release and people doing their comparisons between forza motorsport and Gran Turismo 7 because Forza Motorsport has a lower meta score over GT7. As you see here, it's still sitting at an 87. Now, Gran Turismo 7, I have it. I've played it. I've played it in VR, played it just regularly on the PS5. It is a good sim racing game. There's definitely a lot there that is positive about the game. But the reason why these comparisons are so absurd right now at the launch of Forza Motorsport is because of the simple fact that anybody looking at these scores and using it to console war, trying to make it seem like Gran Turismo 7 is a far superior game because it has an 87 over an 85, shouldn't be taken seriously whatsoever. Because if you guys do remember when Gran Turismo did launch, it was one of the most absurd review processes that we've seen in a very long time. Very deceptive in how they did this as they gave this game out to reviewers while withholding one of the biggest negatives of the games that would have absolutely hurt the overall score for Gran Turismo 7. And nobody is talking about that. It seems like people forgot, but this is what happened when Gran Turismo 7 launched. After the reviews came out, after it got high review scores, they added microtransactions that were just insane. And in fact, just overall predatory in the gaming industry, in, in the game itself. It says here, after initially receiving overwhelmingly positive reviews for critics, Gran Turismo 7 has come under scrutiny from players because of what's being seen as predatory microtransactions. The simulation racing game was celebrated as a return to form for the series after the multiplayer focused detour that was taken with Gran Turismo Sport. But the implementation of in-game purchases after launch has soured the experience for many players. Progression through GT7 largely made by earning credits through racing, but developer Polyphony Digital has seemingly undermined its own in-game economy by instituting microtransactions that let players buy the digital currency in bulk. And it's not just the fact that they go out and buy the currency, it's the fact that they put in these microtransactions and the prices were off the charts. They were just super predatory in how much they were charging people to be able to get these credits and to be able to buy these cars. They say here that the microtransactions and prices are fairly egregious with some individual cars in the game roughly equating to $40 spend in real life. So they had a bunch of predatory microtransactions that they added into the game after the review scores were released where the reviewers were privy to that and that didn't affect the actual score that they gave the game. So the launch meta score for Gran Turismo 7 is absolutely not indicative as to where this game was when it did release. It probably would have gotten a far further review score. And I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, but it is being used right now for console wars, which you're going to see anytime a first party game releases on both PlayStation and on Xbox. I mean, Xbox does the same thing as well here. Problem is, a lot of it is not being argued in good faith as people are just absolutely forgetting what happened with the deception or the reviews for Gran Turismo 7. Now, it's been a wild 
week or two weeks or so in the gaming industry with firings, Jim Ryan leaving, games getting canceled, people getting arrested. It's just been absolutely crazy. We're going to touch on all of that here. Starting with this, Hyenas, as we know, did get canceled. This is from Sega, and it was from Creative Assembly, and it was supposed to be a very ambitious game, a first-person shooter, PvE wacky art style story all this type of stuff i played through the beta and it was a fun game i actually did enjoy it i thought there was something there that could be very good it eventually got through to the end of development which clearly it didn't as it did get canceled but we have some more information here in terms of it being the biggest budget game ever and from hollywood director neil blomkamp who reportedly provided the story direction so first of all why did this game be canceled there's a lot of quotes here from sources that worked on the game you can definitely go through and read that all but basically to sum it all up they're saying here that there was a lack of direction it had a disruptive engine change and an overly cautious design contributed to its downfall. and on top of that they were trying to break into an oversaturated genre which is first person shooters which i think i mean it is there's tons of first person shooters out there but if you can get something new that kind of pulls people away from the main games like a call of duty and add that competition will just push every other first person shooter up a peg as they know they will need to continue to provide great content but fortunately it is hard to break in now those are the main reasons they did get canceled but when it comes to the budget of this game this is apparently one of their biggest budget games that they were trying to create now we heard about the whole sega super game ambitions in fact there was that whole partnership announcement with Sarah Bond and Xbox and Sega, they put out this publication of what they were planning on doing in terms of using the Xbox technologies and helping them create their super game ambition. And people didn't really fully understand what that meant, but we have more insight into what super game means here as they say that Sega claimed in November 2021 that it would consider investing up to 100 billion yen or 882 million dollars over five years to achieve its super game ambitions which would cover the development of multiple projects and hyenas was a part of that super game it says the hyenas is believed to have been one of the super games sega often referred to in its financial results ambitious big budget big budget titles it hoped would pay off with big sales in the future and i find that extremely interesting for the main reason here is that Xbox did have that kind of partnership there with Sega for Super Games. So I feel like Hyenas maybe would have been a game that did land into Xbox Game Pass eventually when it did release. It just kind of all makes sense with the whole Super Game stuff, with it being a multiplayer shooter, a game that you're going to be able to jump in with tons of people right away if it dropped in to the Game Pass service. So this may have been a game that Xbox potentially was banking on to have as a release for the service when it did eventually come out. Again, that's just me speculating. It just kind of with the whole Sega super game stuff, it being multiplayer, it all makes sense. Now, beyond the game getting canceled, one of the biggest things that is is not good here for Creative Assembly is that they canceled the game and then they went ahead and they're making layoffs at Creative Assembly. And here is what this developer said they say i'm not angry with sega for canceling to be honest i firmly believe it would have only lost more money otherwise they typically they're typically a light touch publisher i guess because in the past the studio has been so profitable i fear those days are now over but we'll see and the profitability is a question that for games and for studios is something that has been brought up over and over again recently especially as we're seeing those documents leaked from the xbox leak where Phil Spencer was talking about the issues here with AAA publishers and how much it is costing to make games and how creating something new is a bigger risk than it has ever been. And again, we're seeing this live in front of our eyes, how hard it is to try to create a new IP with Hyena being canceled. They continue here and say, I'm angry with the shit leadership and for the people above them for not dealing with them. I had hoped that maybe after Hyenas flopped, we could be kept on at Creative Assembly if the next project was another nice low risk contract job like Halo Wars 2. You remember Creative Assembly made Halo Wars 2, which I, I thought was phenomenal. It says, but most of us are likely being made redundant and I'm okay with that, really. And they finish it off here and say, what I'm actually furious about is that the redundancies are affecting people who had nothing to do with hyenas like IT, operations, marketing, HR, even some people over on the TW. They bear no responsibility for this bin fire. So 
there you have it. This is overall just a terrible situation with the game being canceled and now firings at Creative Assembly being made. I hope that they can somehow recover this because I think Creative Assembly does some great stuff, but Hyenas is done. If you're looking forward to it, it is not coming out. And I think it really does talk to the state of the industry that is in, it is in right now where these new games becoming tougher and tougher from these major publishers to actually want to go out and make something new. I think we're going to just be seeing a lot of new stuff and a lot of new creative ideas more and more from the indie side of things with the AAA devs out here pretty much going to be putting out the sure bets going forward. Now there's that. And then there is this. If you remember, Ubisoft was under fire for their harassment investigations, their harassment allegations, all of those things that were going on at Ubisoft kind of went away for a little bit. We hadn't heard about it. And now there's just a huge case here that has occurred. And that means is that five former Ubisoft executives have been arrested for the sexual harassment investigation. It says five former executives have been arrested by the French police. And this was reported by the French newspaper Liberation and reported that three arrests were yesterday with another two placed in custody today. Now, who did get arrested? So there were five arrested, but among those, these are the two big ones from Ubisoft. That is the former chief creative officer, Serge Hascote, and the ex-VP of editorial and creative services, Tommy Francois, who both left Ubisoft in the summer of 2020 following the allegations of this widespread abuse so pretty crazy because i think a lot of people thought nothing was going to come out of this and that it was just over and it was people were moving on or it was overlooked no one was talking about it anymore but here it is i mean people have been arrested for these abuse allegations at ubisoft and this is happening on the same day that they are have released assassin's creed mirage which actually has been given lots of good reviews and game is looking like it's a ton of fun but i'm sure that's going to have a huge hit on the overall reception or just the overall news cycle for that game as this is looking like this may end up being a huge story going forward and we'll see what happens if anything does come out further from these arrests now we have this here we have some bioware employees who are suing bioware and we did hear about the whole naughty dog thing the other day with the contract employees being laid off and apparently without severance and other employees at naughty dog we're told to keep quiet. So maybe this is something in the future for Naughty Dog. If this is successful, it says in August, the Dragon Age and Mass Effect studio said it was laying off approximately 50 people as a part of a shift to becoming a more agile and more focused studio. I mean, this is kind of those corporate quotes that we've been seeing a lot lately. A lot of these shifts to become more agile, more focused, all of these little things that people say, all these buzzwords, basically saying that they got to cut some fat from the company because they are not making enough money and they need to be profitable for their shareholders. They need to be profitable going forward. I mean, that's why a business runs and it's just hard times in the gaming industry at every single level. So seven of those impacted by the layoffs who reportedly spent an average of 14 years at the company have now filed a statement of claim with Alberta's court of King bench, arguing that they should have been awarded better severance pay by electronic arts own studio and they say that in most recent court cases of termination without cause, Alberta courts have awarded at least one month of severance pay per year of service with the full value of all the benefits included, having refused to accept BioWare's relatively low offer. So these employees are suing, trying to get more severance, trying to get more money for being laid off. And this is, again, the state of the, the industry. And finally, the whole factions thing. Again, the whole factions thing when it comes to Naughty Dog and The Last of Us 2, it's another thing that I think is a terrible thing that came out of PlayStation that nobody really focuses on or really talks about because this was something that was expected to be a part of the whole Last of Us 2 game when people went to purchase these games. So it was bad enough when they came out on stage at the Game Wars and were like, yeah, it's too ambitious for that. So we're just going to take it out there and probably charge you full price for a standalone version that we know you're going to pay anyways. And now we're at the point where it looks like the game potentially is going to be canceled. And here's another sign that this may actually end up happening as Anders Howard, who is a principal monetization designer who joined Naughty Dog just under a year ago to work on the Last of Us multiplayer project has left the studio, the principal monetization designer. And why this is so important and why this is so big is because th this is the whole goal of going out, taking the multiplayer section away from 
as a part of the package of The Last of Us 2 and releasing it as its own standalone game. It's to make it a games as a service game where there are multiple purchases that can be made through the lifespan of you playing it and that you're always going to be putting money into this game. And that pivot that Jim Ryan has tried to push PlayStation towards, which is having different styles of games besides their virtuous cycle games, their third person action adventure cinematic style of games, because they're getting very expensive to make. They need these multiplayer games as a service games that keep people engaged over a long period of time in order to be able to support making the stuff that they're known for making. And if the principal monetization designer is going away, they must have not had been on the same page here as to how they want to monetize this thing. Maybe he wasn't monetizing enough. Maybe he was monetizing too much. And maybe PlayStation is looking at what was proposed here and thinking they're not going to be able to make enough profit off of this. So they're going to go in a different direction. Or it also could just mean that the game is going to be outright canceled, which there's been no official announcement for that yet. But we're going to have to keep our eyes open for that in the future. So just wild stuff going on here in the gaming industry. But to end things off kind of on a good note here, if you're somebody who likes Diablo 4, you've been waiting for this game to come to Steam. We do have an announcement here that it is coming to Steam later in October. In fact, it's actually coming on October 17th, coincidentally the day before the deadline that Microsoft has to close on the Activision Blizzard acquisition. Again, maybe this is some sort of preparation that Xbox is getting ready for to make sure all of their first party games are available on Steam because that's what they currently do. So if Diablo 4, you don't want to be playing it through Battle.net, through Blizzard's client, you're going to be able to pick it up and play it on Steam on October 17th. I'm going to end the video there, guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.